Okay, everyone, it's Desiree, and I am back with day six of the 2019 Christmas series. So for these, we are just going to make some simple little note cards. You can use them for place cards. You can use them just for um, simple notes. You can even use them as gift tag, um, you know, gift tags. So we're going to do a little bit of each of those. But what we're going to do is I've pulled out some mementos um, for the holly and the berries. And I've pulled out some distress inks for the ornaments. Now, this stamp set here that I am featuring is by Jelly Bean. Um, and I got this when I go at my local Michael's. Um, so in now this is from 2018 so i don't know if this is still available i will check if it is as always i'll have it linked down below if i should forget please you know remind me because i do that too but this is the stamp set that we're going to focus on i've got my mister here a very light mist i mean we're talking one shot of the light mist will be hit onto the ornaments i don't want too much and i will be working on watercolor paper so I have three sheets of that because I'm not quite sure how they're going to land and I want to be able to get them cut. The water pa watercolor paper that I'm using is by Arteza. I'm really becoming a fan of this. This is their expert grade watercolor pad and it's got 32 sheets. It is cold press. Um, it is double sided so one side's a little flatter than the other one. And this is nine and a, nine inches by 12 inches. So what's really nice is if you take this and quarter this, and that's usually what I do, you're going to get 128 pieces. So that's 128 cards. So it's a good deal, and it's at a really good price point. Okay, so let's get started. So I've got my three pieces here. I need to grab my acrylic block. I try to have everything pulled out as much as I can but of course I always forget there's always something that I forget so I'm gonna pull out my stamps obnoxious noise oh no that one was quiet because it came off in reverse so the, for the first one I'm going to pull that off and I'm also going to use my microfiber and just rub this because these are solid stamps. So I just want to haze them up. And that's pretty much what you're doing. You're hazing them up. You're conditioning them so that you can stamp. Okay, so let me get my scratch pad here as well. Yeah, see, remember those? Yeah, okay. And I want to use my greens. So... I'm going to first come down with the lighter shade, and this is Evergreen Bow, or Bow, whatever you want to say, to each his own. And then I'm going to come in with the darker, which is Pine Needles, and I'm going to pull that in along the one side. Now, I'm going to have one mist, and it's going to be very high up, because I don't want, well, maybe one more. I don't want a lot of water on this because I don't want to lose the details. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to stamp this here. And I'm going to hold that for a little bit because I want... I've got a great mixture, so two very light mists, and I mean, I was way up here, you know, at least a foot away. I just want to make sure that the ink goes on to the watercolor paper. So I'm really going to hold it on here. I'm going to put some pressure, and then I'm going to lift. So I love that impression. That actually worked. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed so that we can get the other two to work like this. Yay! So you can see that. It's got a watercolor look to it, but it's not. Make sense? Okay. So I'm going to do the next one. I want to clean this off. And let's do... And you know what? While I'm sitting here thinking of these, I've actually changed my mind 
on what I'm going to do to the tops. I love dimension on my cards. I love dimension on the things that I do. So we're just going to add something up there. I'm going to grab my next one. I'm going to get these out of my way. And I think I want the Happy Holidays to be the red tones that I've chosen. So again, I'm going to go in with my lighter and I chose Abandoned Coral for my lighter. And then I'm going to come in with Aged Mahogany for my darker. And I'm just going to come right along in on the edge there. Move those Again, I'm going to come up really high. I mean, you can see how close I am to my camera. And I'm just going to spray once. And I'm going to spray twice. Again, I just don't want to lose the details that I have in the stamp. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go straight down. I'm going to apply the pressure and I'm just going to hold it just for a little bit, maybe for about 30 seconds that I'm holding this because I do want that ink to get absorbed into the watercolor paper a little bit. Now, because again, I'm not doing this too watercolory. I use technical terms, can you tell? But I also, I've got engraved messages within these ornaments. So I don't want to lo lose that, but I do want the watercolor effect, if that makes sense. So you can see that one, I did not lose that. I still have that there. It could have, you know, it didn't blend as much as what I wanted, but that's because I was probably more up here when I sprayed it and that's okay. So I'm going to set that up there to dry and we're going to do the last one and that one's going to just simply say Merry Christmas. I'm going to do the same thing. I want to wipe this down just to, they, they call it conditioning, I call it scuff it up. That's what I'm referring to it as. Same thing, I'm going to, my lightest color is Broken China. And my darker color is chipped sapphire. So again, I'm just going to come around on the edge and the bottom and just add that color. Two very light sprays. And same thing. I'm just going to bring this down on an angle and I want to go straight. And I'm going to hold that there again, 30, 40 seconds, just to allow the, the ink and the water to absorb into the paper so that it holds its shape. I don't mind that we've got those little bit of, uh, smudges or movement on the outside because that's, what's giving me my watercolor effect as well, but I don't want it to. And again, I've got some great movement going on there and it's already absorbed into the paper. So again, just two nice colors. Again, it's got a little bit of shading going on to it. The green I think came out the best. I could try to spray the water on top to see what that would do. But again, I don't want to lose the image that's going on there. And wow, you can tell the sun's coming in. Yay. That's bright. I don't want to lose that image. All right, so I'm going to clean this and I'm going to put that there and I want this little tiny line. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to set this up here, put my covers back on. All right, now what I also want to do, I'm going to see if these are, yes, they are. So I want to trim these down. Now my card bases are cut three by four and a half or my card bases are three by four and a half. So you would cut it six by four and a half, score at the three, uh, three inch mark. So 
I want to cut these. First, I'm going to put this in here. I want it to be two and seven eighths and that. All right, so I'm gonna come up here and cut that. So that's three. And now I'm gonna come in on this side and trim that out. All right, then I need this to be four and a quarter. So I'm going to take this and cut this like this. I don't know if you can hear that, but we have got some wicked winds going on today. Makes me very nervous. I don't like wind. Okay, so this is actually cut two and a quarter by four and one quarter. So I'm going to trim each of my pieces up that way. And the first thing that I'm always going to do is take this to three and then I'm going to trim off that bottom and then I'm going to come here make sure that's lined up with this edge and then I'm going to come over here and make that four and a quarter so each one's not going to be completely perfect but they're going to be close and that's all we're looking for again nothing's perfect we don't need to be perfect um, I actually like the base on that, so I think I'm going to take this straight up here so I don't have to now come over on this side. I think for this, I'm going to put that there, and then I'm going to come in and cut that four and a quarter. I do save these. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to use my Memento Black and I'm just going to ink up the edge of this line here because I'm just going to have it coming in from the top like so. And again, I'm going to try to keep it even. I don't know if that's going to work, but what I do like is because I'm stamping on the watercolor paper, it looks like that was watercolored it as well. So, yay. Yay me. I'm going to clean that off, set that aside as well. All right. I am going to come in with my vintage photo. You knew it was coming in, right? Please. It's been a while. And I'm going to come in around the outside just to give it some color. Now, there's room here, as I said, that you can add a to and a from. You can add, write somebody's name. You know, however you would want to use them, completely and totally, totally your choice. So now what I've done is I've cut some gold. This is the Tim Holt Mirror Cardstock. This is cut three by four and a half, and I am going to use my tape runner. And I'm going to set these down onto the mirror cardstock. I just need to move that piece of paper or my tablet here, or else I'm going to mess something up. Same thing. So again, something quick, something simple, but yet has, oh, for God's sakes, but has the, I don't want to do that yet. <laughs> See, there's always something. <laughs> But yet looks like you took the time to watercolor it. You know, again, it's the one thing that I love when it comes to this. We create illusions. But we are all, we all still create art. You know where I'm going with that. Um, but we can create those illusions. So I'm going to put that there. And then this is the one for my red. And then this is the one for my blue. So 
So when it comes to these, as I said, you can draw, you know, write the names, use these. These would make great seating cards. You know, you can just write their name going up there with whatever you're looking for. And then if I take these and actually I'm not done because we're going to embellish these just a little bit. Got to have some embellishments going on. Okay, so what you can do, if I grab my hole punch, and all you would have to do, oh my, got lots of things going on in there, there we go, and if I go right into that corner, just punch a hole. And then all I'd have to do is just get some twine. Push that through. Those winds are just howling today. And then I'm going to tie a knot in on the top. And I'll even double knot that. Trim. So now you've, well, could even be an ornament if you wanted to, but now you've made a little tiny tag for a gift if you want to do that. And again, these can be place card settings. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do, just to add a little bit to them, is to take my twine and I'm just going to cut a section off and what I want to do is I want to double so I want that and I'm going to cut three of them And now I am going to double this up. I'm going to take it and I'm going to make some bows. And then that's just a little bit of an embellishment that's going to go up top of each of our ornaments. So just a little something, something. You know, you got to have a little little bit of an embellishment and that'll sit right like there so I'm going to of course grab my glue dots because is there anything else of course not um, I know I've said this before in a previous video but whoever invented the concept of a glue dot is a genius very much so. Um, absolute genius. Okay, now this thing is stuck on my hand. It's the only bad thing about them. Those little tiny pull-off papers. And we're going to do the same thing. I come out on the edge, I fold it in half, I cross them over, I reach in, I pull, I keep my fingers crossed, And then I put make it tighter. Looks great. Snip. Make it even. I'm gonna add another glue dot. I'm gonna place that down. And again, you want to make sure that your ornaments are dry before you're putting your glue dot down. And now, and we can even do it to this one, even though we just have a um, tag coming off of it. 
But again, you can even, even though that's turned into a tag and you have a tassel coming off of it, doesn't mean that that can't be a place card either. You know, again, it's, it's your creation. It's your table. It's, you know, things that you want to do. So just because it looks like it's out of the norm doesn't mean it's not the norm. Right? Right. And we will grab another glue dot. So have fun with it. See what, you know, the, the types of items that you have in your stash that you can do something similar to this. Again, doesn't have to be exact. So you have this, and again, that can come off like that. I have that one. And then I have that one. So three types or two different types, but they can be anything that you're looking for. So again, I hope you enjoyed day six of the 2019 Christmas series. The products that I used, if it's still available, will be listed down below in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below as well, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending just this little bit of time through the 2019 Christmas series um, and this video for day six. If you haven't yet, I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell and make sure you hit the thumbs up. By ringing the bell, you'll be notified when the next video goes live. Again, this is going to try to be a 25-day series, hopefully not a marathon. I do hope everyone's enjoying the day. I hope you don't have the wins that I have, but always remember what's most important. Always be creative. Till next time, guys. Bye.